Let me ask you this. What would you do if your child stopped listening to you? Hi, my name is Tom, and today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of not only allowing children to have a voice, but enabling that voice to be heard. Now, when I say your child's not listening to you, I don't mean when you have asked them to come in for dinner and they keep playing for just five more minutes, when you ask them to clean their teeth for the tenth time that night. I mean if your child stops listening to your beliefs, your opinions, your ideas about the world. I bet you feel frustrated, upset, like you're not valued, maybe even angry. That's how kids feel when adults don't listen to the their opinions and ideas about the world, the opinions and ideas that they feel are important to them. So I want to talk about what I think is important about listening to kids. But before I talk about listening to kids, I think we have to take a step back and consider whether kids and young people feel it is worth expressing their opinions at all. Think back to your childhood when you had that great idea. Did you get to share it? Was it listened to? Was it just an idea that stayed with you, unspoken and unheard? I know there have been many times where I have said to my parents, there's no point in me asking you, because no matter how good my arguments are, you're just going to say no. When I'm asking whether I can have a second helping of dessert, I understand why the answer is no. But how often does this happen when a child has something important to say? Kids can often feel that adults just don't want to listen to them. But imagine this was not the case. For example, recently a 15-year-old Swedish school student, Greta Thunberg, began protesting for climate change action in Stockholm. Initially, Greta was ignored by the adult politicians and it seems many adults in Sweden. But she persisted because she felt that what she had to say was important. Because Greta's parents really listened to her and understood she was genuinely concerned about climate change and the impact it was having on the earth, they allowed Greta to stop going to school and to protest outside of parliament. Slowly, over time, other students and adults joined her protest. And just a few weeks ago, the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, so she supported the weekly school protests and welcomed the students who were protesting for climate protection. Now, students all over the world are taking action to voice their concerns about climate change and the impact it will have on their future. Two weeks ago, students from all over Australia joined Greta in a weekly protest. Tens of, tens of thousands of students took to the streets to voice their opinions and express their concern about climate change. Given children are the ones who will be living on this planet in the future, I cannot stress of a more important topic about which children should be consulted and listened to. But if Greta's parents had not stopped and truly listened to her, she might not have thought it was worth persisting. She might not have thought her ideas were valued. She might not have sacrificed her comfortable life of going to school each day to make her opinions heard. But thank goodness she did. And sometimes ideas can be important to a child, even if adults don't think that they are. And sometimes it can be important, very important, not only to the child, but also to the world. So I think the first step in children having a voice is letting them know their opinions are valued. It doesn't matter if the ideas are silly or out of this world. I can't say that every idea I've heard an adult suggest has been any less crazy than kids. For example, a current president of America had probably made some decisions that could have been made by a kid. But he still voices his opinions loudly and often. And I think the reason that Mr. Trump gives his opinion so often is because he thinks that they have value. Now that I've talked about children having a voice that is valued, I want to talk about enabling that voice. In an ideal world, kids would have the same opportunity as President Trump to express their views. 
I don't think it needs to be on the same world stage that a president speaks to, but, the same, but they have the same opportunity to speak and be heard. So how can we work towards achieving this? Well, this conference is a brilliant start. I was also inspired to learn about the Scottish Children's Parliament and the Children's Parliament in Liverpool, New South Wales. At the Scottish Children's Parliament, children from all over Scotland get to participate in it and contribute ideas to help shape the future of Scotland. They also get to meet with prominent leaders of the community to share their ideas. And I particularly like the motto of the Scottish Children's Parliament, giving ideas a voice. At the Children's Parliament in Liverpool, New South Wales, last year, every Year 5 student from the 2,168 participating schools were invited to attend the University of Western Sydney to participate in workshops called What Matters. I can only imagine that would have been an amazing event and what an amazing opportunity for those students, children being given a voice right here in Australia. In Queensland, we have the YMCA Youth Parliament, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. For those who aren't familiar with it, the, the Youth Parliament is open to 15 to 25 year olds who get selected to participate in a program to learn about the functioning of Australian governments, how laws are made, and includes getting to participate in a mock parliament where their ideas are shared with real politicians. This is a great idea but it is for 15 to 25 year olds. And that got me thinking, why are those young adults willing to put their hand up and volunteer? I think they're willing to put their hand up and volunteer because they feel their opinions have value and they feel valued by participating in the youth parliament. Possibly someone in their lives listened to them, truly listened to them and encouraged them to take that part. Another way young people are getting a voice is through student representation. My school, Maruka State School, along with many others, gives students the opportunity to be heard through student leadership positions. I'm fortunate to be part of my student council. And in that role, I get to speak to teachers and students about matters that are important to me and my school. This is another great platform for young people to have the opportunity to express their views. What about kids who aren't in leadership roles? I think it is very important that all kids and young people, regardless of whether they have a leadership role or not, have the chance to be heard. Children can't vote. I get why. But I think one way every child should be given the opportunity to be heard is if they are taught at primary school about the opportunities that exist for them to express their opinions. From just talking to their parents or teachers, to writing to their local member of parliament, all the way to representing other kids at children's parliaments. And as part of that subject, I think each kid should be given the opportunity to come up with an idea that is important to them, and then to choose who they would like to tell their idea to, and then to practice actually communicating their idea to that person. I think it would be great for every kid to have that opportunity. I also understand that many of you, if not most of you, work with or for children. So you probably already spend a lot of time listening and talking to kids, which is great. Please keep doing that. So I think the second step in children having a voice is ensuring that they are provided with the opportunity to express their ideas. Some of the questions I thought about when I was writing this speech were, how do kids currently get to express their opinions? And how does every child's voice get to be valued in the same way? I've, tr I've tried to provide some of my answers for these questions, but I think it would be good if adults also thought about these questions, what their answers were. Hopefully by thinking about these questions together, even more ways for kids to be heard may be created. And the reason I think that it is so important for children to feel their opinions are valued and they get an opportunity to express their views is because, in my opinion, a valued kid is more likely to be a thinking kid who is not afraid to express their ideas. And a kid who has the opportunity to express their opinions is more likely to do so. And who knows, 
a valued listener kid, might just come up with that next great idea. I've never given a speech before, so I had to do some research about what a keynote speech was and to get some tips on how to deliver it. In my research, I discovered that a keynote speaker is meant to tell the audience what their hope for change is. That seems a rather big task. But my hope for today, today is that each and every one of you makes a conscious decision to be an active listener to the children and young people whom you may come across in your lives so that every kid has the opportunity to feel valued and to be heard. In conclusion, I hope you enjoy your conference and enjoy discussing some of the great ideas that are being presented. I'd like to thank the conference organisers for giving me the opportunity to speak at this conference. But most importantly, I want to thank you for listening.